Welcome back to New York City, everybody. I'm Coach Todd. I had a cookie for breakfast. That's Coach Cole. We're filming in Brooklyn today. We're at Willie B Fitness, and we're back for another Boot Camp Challenge workout. This is Boot Camp Challenge workout number 10 that we're going to be hopping into today. So just as a reminder, you're going to need either one kettlebell or one dumbbell. Coach Cole's going to be using that dumbbell. I'm going to be using a kettlebell. If uh, kettlebell movements is a little newer for you, the snatching might kind of bang up your wrist a little bit, so you might want to stick with the dumbbell for today's workout. We're going to be hopping in in just a minute with the warm-up. we got 12 minutes of strength coming up. Take a quick break, and then we'll head into our conditioning, and we'll get you in and out in just about 40 minutes. So with that being said, Coach Cole, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sure. Cool. We're going to put our hands behind our head. We're going to do some good boardings to start off today. Feet under the shoulders. Nice soft knees for me. Keep your chest proud. Send your butt behind you. Stand back up. Let's hit 10. We're going to try to feel those hamstrings. Stretch out. Reach backwards. Nice and slow. Not sure where you're doing this workout when you're watching it on whatever day it is, but it is warm in here, so we are nice and warm. We're gonna get nice and sweaty today. It's 10, it's 10 a.m. and it's already 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Oh yeah, we're gonna keep our hands behind our head now. We're gonna go for 10 air squats. We'll widen your stance a little bit, hips back and down. Stand back up for me. We'll hit 10 here. What's your ideal workout temperature? Um, oh, that's a thing. I right. I actually am super into working out in hot temperatures like this. Me too. I enjoy being hot. The warm ups take a lot less time. You stay warm a lot longer. But when you stay warm, you should stay, right. you, you stay warm. But 10 Frankenstein kicks, fists forward, left foot to the right hand, right foot to the left hand, 10 side to side. If you're not working out, if you're coaching, it's a little, a little different. Um, I do like, I, I like, once I work out and like start getting hot, it's just like hot, so it doesn't really matter what temperature it is. But I will say I was a little ambitious with a Miami run a couple weekends ago at like 1 p.m. I was like, I'll run to the beach with my friend who's a couple miles away. <laughs> Ooh, got really hot. Down in Miami? Yeah. Um, hands back behind the head. We're going to hit some high knees. Let's go for 20. It's just like all humidity and heat. And you're running on the beach, which is even harder. See there, place the boardwalk down there. It used to be like, like a wooden boardwalk. Kick yourself in the butt 20 times. Man, I like running on the wood a lot better, but not the pavement. Oh. So the wood gives you a nice little bounce. Yeah. It's so much better. Now we're kind of just hard and hurts my knees. I'm old. <laughs> cool. We're going to hit three quick interrupts. Hands on the floor. Walk it out forward. Push up from the feet of the knees. Walk it back in. Roll it on up. After you hit your third interim, you may hang out, grab a drink, go grab that weight if you need to do so. Todd and I are going to talk about we're getting started for the day. Whew. So we're going to be talking about the workout in just about 30 seconds or so. Before we do that though, um, I'm going to say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe? Yeah. Smash that like button. Just like that. Coach Wilson is using a dumbbell, I'm using a kettlebell. I got a little rip on my hand today, so we'll kind of see how it goes. But if you see me doing some weird things at times, it might just be because I got a torn callus, which I should follow our YouTube videos about how to care for your hands. There's a whole video about, about filing down your callus. If you're really, really super duper serious about taking care of your hands, they will never rip. Like my hands never rip. I'm very, very serious about it. Yeah, for sure. Nice and soft. A little bit hard, but just happy medium. Goldilocks. So. All right, so for our strength, we got two move, three movements, sorry. We got a push press, we got a snatch, and then we got some air squats. Coach Cole's gonna demonstrate with the dumbbell for us. First things first, we're gonna do the push press, so he's gonna start in that front rack position. Shallow dip forward, breaking up the knees, opening up, creating some uh, momentum with his lower body, and then finishing with a press overhead. We'll be doing sets of set, I'm um, sorry, sets of 10, just a few there. Once we get done with the 10 push press, we're immediately gonna go into 10 snatches. So still, on that same side, just going straight into that hinge, finishing locked out overhead. We'll do 10 on that side, and then we'll immediately switch sides. We got 10 push press, going into 10 snatches, and then with the remainder of the time, because we're going to be on a two minute clock, you're going to be doing max effort air squats. So say that takes you about a minute, then you got about a minute of air squats. This is your score for today's workout, so keep track here. 
you keep a cumulative number. So at the end, your score that you're gonna put in the comments is just gonna be the total air squats you did over the six rounds that we have coming up first. So I recommend you start on your left hand side, particularly if you're right handed, starting on the non-dominant side, the weaker side just gets you had a little more confidence and knowledge that you can get through it on the second side instead of starting with your stronger side and then hitting the weaker side second and not being able to get through all the reps. We can go ahead. All right, 30 seconds, I'll put it on the clock. So we got 30 seconds till we're starting. On that left side, 10 push press, 10 snatch. On your right side, 10 push press, 10 snatch. And then you'll just be doing max air squats until we start that next round. We got about 20 seconds to go. I'm going with my left first. My left arm is the weaker arm. Even though my right wrist is small. Now that I think about it. No, I'm gonna go left first. Four, three, two, one. I'm old and falling apart over here. 10 push press, dip drive punch. As we're dipping for this push press, you really want to avoid squatting, right? It's a nice knee-driven movement. So you're dipping through the heels and bending the knees, but your hips are staying nice and open right under your chest. We're not sending our hips back for the dip. That's a squat. We're doing a dip, and then 10 snatches. Hot speed ahead of me. As soon as you get done with the snatches on your left side, or whichever side you started on, a couple more to go, you're immediately switching to that right hand side. So switching sides, first all the push press is 10 of them. Again, once we finish out that second arm, which is coming up, we are finding some air squats. You can go as fast as you like. We have six rounds of this today. I hopefully We'd love to see if you hit 10 air squats the first round, somewhere around that 10, 8 to 12 range for the next preceding five rounds. Kind of figure pace we can hang on to today. We've got 40 seconds left. All right, 30 seconds to go for me for air squats. Get through these squats, keep a count. And we got 20 seconds and we're back to the top. Ten seconds, couple more. Catch your breath here because we are right back into ten push press in six, five, four, three, two, one. Left arm again or right arm again. Ten plus ten. I think you got sixteen air squats. How many did you get, Tom? I got fifteen. Nice. All right, so we're into round two. You got a little good feel of how that round is going to feel. Two things to be thinking about. One. When you're doing these push presses and the snatches, once you get that weight overhead, particularly for the push press, you want to think about having your thumb facing behind you and your elbows facing forward. So for every rep, there shouldn't be any movement. Thumb stays behind you all the way down and then all the way up. It might not happen with the snatching, depending on how you snatch a kettlebell. So there's two main ways to snatch a kettlebell. One's a hard style, one's a soft style. Um, hard style is definitely more commonly known, and when you are doing a hard style, I prefer it's a soft ice cream, but yeah. what flavor? Mm, honestly, vanilla with like chocolate sprinkles. Vanilla with chocolate sprinkles. It's now like eight, 95 degrees in this room. Totally interrupted so. Todd's coaching there talking about ice cream, but <laughs> so it really is hot. So if you're doing a hard style snatch, your thumb is probably gonna stay to your side the whole time during that whole movement. But if you're doing more of a soft style snatch, then you also will have that thumb behind you. So kind of a lot of information there. Um, I'll try to explain a little more as we get through more rounds. Pretty good chance though, you've gotten pretty close to the air squats, if not moving into the air squats. I'll pop in here with Coach Cole for air squats. We got about 30 seconds to go. We'll be done with round two. Then we'll get into that third round, which puts us at the halfway point. Try not to let those air squats drop off a ton, all right? If you're sprinting and then having to rest a ton, Pull back on the pace, squat, breathe, squat, breathe. Find yourself in that hopefully 10, 15, 20 range. We're feeling killer today. Or if you're in some air conditioned apartment. Four, three, 
two, round three, here we are. All right, back to the push presses, remember 10. 10 push press, 10 snaps per side. I feel like you're a hard ice cream person. Um, no, I, I like soft syrup, okay. but interestingly, I like hard ice cream, and then you stir it until it's soft enough to be like soft syrup. Interesting. I used to do it as a kid. I've done really that in the past 10 years, but I'm a really big frozen yogurt person. Like, fro like a 16 handles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go to 16 handles, and I like, get some frozen yogurt, but I fill the bowl up with pop. Like I put granola in it, I put berries in it, I put gummy bears in it. And this is not a common occurrence, right? It's a very, very seldom occurrence, but... Also, I really recently lived near a place called Tipsy Scoop, which is a place with alcohol in it. I've not tried it yet, but it sounds like a great Friday night activity. Honestly, my favorite thing at like 16 Handles is Pumpkin soft skirt with chunks of cheesecake on top. Oh, they oh, pretty good. Pumpkin stuff is iffy for me. Sometimes it's good, sometimes I get a little full. We got 30 seconds left. Finish the side snatches. All right. Your goal should be at least one air squat. All right. We got 20 seconds to go. We're gonna be halfway through the strength. Three right another air squats. Turn up the pace on these. Four, three, two, one. Good. Good. That is that halfway point. We're moving on into round four today. All right. Straight into those push presses. Todd's doing a really good job for me today. That gave me a nice short little dip and drive. He's using that nice little bounce, that stretch reflex out of the bottom to keep his weight moving up and down. All right, when we push press or push jerk, kettlebells, dumbbells, even barbells, if you want to learn how to use that momentum, make sure we don't squat, sit right through the knees, it is a knee-driven movement, and what knee-driven movements will do. Functional fitness, it's really good at moving weight overhead. Todd is also doing a great job when he pulls for that snatch, keeping his elbow nice and close to his body. All right, that's going to keep the, the, the barbell, excuse me, the kettlebell or the dumbbell much closer to him. And the closer weight is to you, all right, the easier it is to move, the more efficiently we're gonna move here. If you're hot and you're sweating and you got 40 reps to do with us, moving weight efficiently is important. Cool. If I hold the weight here, it feels super light. If you guys try and hold your 10, 15 pound dumbbells out here, you're not gonna be able to hold it very long at all. That's what we're trying to do when we move that weight. Come right there with you, Todd. Got about 45 seconds to go. About 30 seconds. All right. 25 seconds. Back squat. Those air squats. This is our third round. This is our fourth round. We're going to on round five. All right. Finish this up two more. I'm having so much fun, I can't keep track. Do I do an extra? No. No. It's hot. Seven. Six. Five. Here to sweat, so keep moving with me. Three, two, one, right back on that dumbbell. Here we are. So we got this and then one more round. So usually the next to last round is the most challenging mentally. When you get to the last round, it's kind of easier to push through. So let's just get through this. Get your 10 push presses, going into those snatches. Just about 30 seconds in. Hang on, we're gonna earn those snatches today. Lots of reps on both arms. Think about your breath. No matter what you're doing, your breath is always your steering wheel. All right, just about one minute in. Today. All right, got about 40 
45 seconds to go. Right down, right on up. We'll keep a pace for the squats. I know we're getting sweaty. I know it's round five. So as long as we keep breathing and moving, it's a nice little win today. All right. Got about 20 seconds to go for squats, then we got our last round coming up. Doing a great job. Almost to that last round. Ten more seconds. Three, two, one. Here we go. Hit that dumbbell or that kettlebell. Last, last time on this side. Cool. So the quicker you get ten and ten, the quicker you can switch sides. Air squats. We're gonna work for the remainder of this about a minute and 40 seconds we got here. Last push press of this, last snatching of the day. 90 more seconds of work, then we're gonna take a break. Take a break, get some water. Coach Cole's gonna tell us how the conditioning's gonna work. Yes, he will. Second side, four coming up on a minute left. Don't give in now. We're here about one minute to go. So getting through these reps, maybe even the snatches, might be a little more challenging than it was before. We said it's a lot, but try to think about keeping your forearm glued to your stomach as long as possible when you're doing that snatch to get the most out of that lower body. Really get the most out of that hip hinge to get the weight moving up. 45 seconds. Just about 30 seconds. Hang on. Cool. Let's put that dumbbell down. Feet. Um, squatting with up and down. Stay with me. You don't even have to pace these out anymore. We got a few minutes to rest and hang out after this. All right. 15 seconds. Finish it with air squats all the way until the beat. 10 seconds. Hang on. A couple more. Five, four, three, two, one, and that's time. Nice job, everybody. Take nice it job. out, catch your breath, wipe a little sweat off. Sweating today, isn't that crazy? This never happens. No matter how much we work out, Coach School never sweats. So this I is, uh, I'm, I'm a human being, I sweat. You're human, huh? You're like everyone else? Every time I was doing air squats, Every time we go down a river. A yeah, I will say, um, I have one or two times in my life, I think both of which have been in competition, never been like dripping sweat from my body, like on the floor. It doesn't happen. Some people, I think it's totally genetic. Some people walk into the gym and I, they just pour. It's a good old shower. All right, we're gonna take about 30 seconds. We've got a workout to do. Don't go anywhere on me. different couplets. Each workout is going to be two movements, hence the couplet. Uh, we'll go over four minutes of one, take a minute off. Four minutes of the other, take a minute off. We're going to hit both of them again. Second time though, we'll do each for three minutes. We'll only rest 30 seconds in the middle, we'll be out of here for the day. All right, so far we have run a bit, but if you've been here for a while, you've done it before. Todd's going to help me with these movements. First workout, Todd's going to hit the floor. So are you. He's going to do me. Do me. He's going to do me. <laughs> And do for me five tuck ups. So his feet and his arms are reached out. Nice tall position. He's gonna reach for his shoelaces, tuck his knees in, come right back out. We'll do five for me for five. He's gonna hop up to his feet. Four, five, ski jump. He's gonna hop nice and far to the right, tap his left hand to his right shoe, etc. etc. Three, four, five. Good. He's then back on the floor. You can sit down. He's gonna do ten tuck ups, ten ski jumps, then fifteen tuck ups, fifteen ski jumps. Climbing up the ladder, I expect us to be able to get at least to that round of 20 today in that four minutes, for sure. All right, if not more. Take a minute off. Then, 
We are going to do 10 goblet squats to begin the second workout. We're holding that kettlebell or dumbbell like a goblet. You can hold it whichever way you like, by the horns, by the bell, as long as you keep it right close to the chest, it's all the way down, all the way up. Then he's gonna hit 10 push-ups on the floor for me. You can do one of a couple things. His elbows are always relatively close to his body. Cool, no chicken wing today. His butt's nice and tight. He's in a nice tall plank. If he needs to, he may do these from his knees. Cool. If you're near something like a coffee table or an ottoman or a couch, you may also elevate where your hands are. Put your hands on top of the couch to make those push-ups a little bit more manageable. All right? If you're, too, if you're stuck between the two of them, I would prefer you raise up your hands before you drop your knees. Awesome. If you happen to have a gym bench at home next to you, or you're at a gym, I'll just do that. We're going to go in about 30 or 40 seconds here. We're going to start on our tuck ups and ski jumps. So remember, this is four minutes of work, one, one minute of rest coming up. Starting in just about 25 seconds. This is the first workout we've ever done with us. There's a whole lot of other workouts on the channel. There's more of these boot camp challenge workouts. There's 40 minute one weight workouts. 20 minute body weight workouts, 10 minute abs, 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 abs workouts. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it's a great time to do it. That way you get notifications because we upload new videos every week, mostly. Three, two, one, five, tuck ups. Nice and quick. Reach, tuck, reach, tuck. Three, four, five. Good, cool, hop on up. 10 ski jumps, where are you going? I don't want to smash your hand. Give me five ski jumps, three, Four, five. Each one counts as one. Right back down to the floor, please. Well, now we're getting ten. Again, we're gonna climb the ladder today. All right. Ten ski jumps. Take some breath. All right. The ski jumps. Ideally, we're jumping as wide as you can, comfortably. All right. To make Ski jumps a little bit more cardio, make you breathe a little bit more. Go for a bigger jump. If you're in a smaller space, you're trying not to run into the person working out next to you. All right, you can go a little smaller, but as big as you're comfortable going today. Once you get done with the ski jumps, you're heading into 15. 15 tuck ups, 15 ski jumps. For these tuck ups, let's remember that we're always going to start and finish in a hollow body position. Knees into your chest, back to a hollow, as opposed to being in a hollow and collapsing on the ground, and then hollow, and then, sorry, tucking and collapsing on the ground. So every time, always come back to this hollow, knees in, hollow, knees Ooh. in. Fifteen's a lot, there's a good chance you're going to need to take a quick break. Yeah, okay. it is. Just make the break short, get right back into it. Alright, we're almost halfway through. On that round of 20 at least, some of us might even zoom in and get to 30. Well, it's the only four minutes you can do with these two movements. Make it count. If when you're doing this, tuck ups aren't becoming too challenging for you, what you can do to scale it is some sit ups. So butterfly your feet, put the bottoms of your feet together, and then from here, Touch the ground behind you, touch the ground right in front. So if you need to, you can scale on the sit ups. If this lets you keep moving, because the goal is relatively continuous motion. We got 90 seconds, so we're gonna do that locomotion, continuous motion for another 90. Hang on for me.
on that side. Try and get to the end of wherever you are. Oh, cool. One more. <laughs> Woo. Hang on. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. There we go. Four, three, two, and rest. All right. Good. Got through the 20s. 25 of my tuck ups. Tuck ups. Um, take note of where you are. If you finished on the round of 20 or 15 or 25, remember that. We'll use that number when we come back for round two. But 45 seconds off, 10 goblet squats, 10 push ups. The number stays the same for as many rounds as we can. Cool? I think you should be able to do four. I would like to do four. That's my yeah. goal. Four push ups. 10 are a lot for a lot of people. And that's why scaling is important. Because again, right. continuous motion is more important than doing a couple push-ups, having to rest 20 seconds, a couple push-ups, having to rest. Um, We're on that continuous motion train. I like those words now. The continuous motion train. train. No, no, no. 15 seconds though. You find that kettlebell. We've got 10 squats coming. 10 squats, 10 push-ups, four minutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. For these squats, let's just remember that you want to try to get below parallel. That's getting the crease of your hip down below the imaginary line above your knee, as long as that back stays neutral. Holding a weight in front of you is a good way to help keep that back neutral because it forces you to engage your core more. The more you're going to engage your core, the more likely that back is to be neutral. As soon as you get done with those, go straight into the push ups. If you know that push ups are going to be a challenge for you, break them up from this first round. Coach Cole did five. Took a quick break, doing five again. You can even think about doing like three, 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 one, or something like that, four, three, three. Because it's how you finish, not how you start. So, for Still a lot of less than a minute in. Cool. My goal is to get four rounds, I'm right on track. All right, 60 seconds in, looking good. For these push-ups, you're doing them unassisted, chest touches the ground and nothing else. <coughs> Quick five, no set of five. The fives are for you, threes. Three, three, two, two. Does that make sense? Just over 
25 seconds. Here we go. A minute of rest coming, so let's just go. Let's keep going. 20 seconds to go. Hang on. Find a couple reps. They're in there. Here we go, Todd. Finish it out for us. Stay in four. Three, two, one. Good. There we go. One minute off. Your four minute rounds are over. All right. 50 more seconds press. Besides all the YouTube workouts that we have, we also host workouts here in New York City every Saturday. Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens. Woo! In Brooklyn, it's right here with Coach Cole at Willie B in the Greenpoint location, as well as our two other ones. So if you're in the New York City area, New York City area, all the information is on the website. You can check it out. 30 seconds. How does this work? Remind us. So I got somewhere in the round of 25 tuck ups. I'm gonna start with my round of 25 from the top. So I'm gonna start in 20 seconds, do 25 tuck ups. 25 ski jumps, then I'm going to do 20 tuck ups, 20 ski jumps, work back down from wherever you got to, we only have 3 minutes, so if you finish that means you really sped up on me, alright, 6, 5, 4, if you don't know where you are, start with me and do 25, 2, 1, we got a big set to start, if you want to start off with the tuck ups, see how far you can get, again if you start to fatigue, if you're having have issues balancing on your tailbone or all that, you can go ahead and switch to sit ups, Only a few minutes this time. Keep that focus there. Let your mind sway. If you do, the blinders back on. Head down, eyes up. Here we go. Good. 30 seconds in. Heck yeah. Up for some uh, skier hop side to side. Same number. Subtract five once you finish. Alright, 60 seconds in, last two minutes of these two movements for the tuck ups and the ski jumps. Woo! Pick it up. Good. 
Good, get done with those 10 squats, going into 10 push ups. Less than three minutes to go. Same thing if you broke up last time's sets, break up these sets, it's cool. I'm gonna find five, keep myself moving. Squats, just over two minutes. It's less than two minutes. Feel that sweat dripping. Good, get on those squats, right into the push ups. Get a couple reps in before you take a break. Oh, yeah. Every inch of me. 